Hello, I'm Jane Turner from writewithjane.com and in a moment I'm going to ease into a conversation that I was having with Kate Burr who is the author of Hit Your Target and you can see the cover of her book beside me here and also what I'd like to direct your attention to is the URL that you can see above my head. Now the first one is just if you'd like to contact me, I'm at writewithjane.com but more importantly, the one underneath it will take you through to a page where Kate has shared some incredible resources for anybody who's planning to speak on stage and who wants to make sure that they get real engagement with their audience. So without any further ado, I want to just ease into the conversation that I had with Kate. Hey, <laughs> could you start by telling us what your background is and how you got to where you are now? Yeah, so super quick in a nutshell, I um, was a stand-up comedian, uh, then became a mum and couldn't do stand-up comedy the same way that I used to because like being out on the road or out late at night just wasn't working with a little baby. So I started a comedy show for mums in a local tennis club, which quickly turned into a fundraising model where we'd go out to schools and sports clubs and put on fundraising shows, which is where, where this book, The Hit Your Target, comes in because that's like all the stuff that um, we used to teach the hosts is now how to fundraise um, for people who don't want to put on a comedy night. Um, but anyway, so I turned from comedian into business owner and I had no idea what I was doing in the world of business. So I had to go and find um, some fabulous entrepreneurial groups and business coaches and the like and started doing all that. Then met some professional speakers on that journey and they found out that I was a stand-up comedian and they said, do you teach people how to be funny? And I'm like, no, that's not even a thing. <laughs> And it turns out that they were right and I was wrong. And it is. So that's sort of what I do now. So I help professional speakers bring more funny to their presentations so that they're more engaging and entertaining. Um, and then I sort of, then that sort of has also morphed into speaking on stage as well myself. So. Got it. Got it. <laughs> and how do you, how do you start with people when they've, they reckon they've got a presentation, they've done their presentations before, they're all good, but something's not working. Yeah. Where do you take that? Yeah, so what I um, like to do is have it, um, I sort of work in three stages when I work um, with clients. So we usually work one-on-one -on -one because it's so many different things happening. So we sort of follow the same formula, but trying to do it in a group situation is never going to work. So the first part of what I do when I get together with people is I work out like we define what the problems are or what they're trying to, what the message is they're trying to get across. So we just get really clear on what we're trying to do. And where are the barriers to doing that as well? So sometimes it might be that you've got a really dull and dry and boring topic, but it's super important, or it might be really complicated, or it might be something that people don't want to talk about and those sorts of things. So we sort of define the problem or define what you're actually trying to do. And then the second session is we develop the material. So it's like, how do we put some more humor in there and put the funny bits in? And then at the third session that we usually do is how to deliver it in a way that is congruent to you. And so it doesn't sound like you're just being trying to, yeah, um, I call them the waka 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 guys. Do you remember in the seventies where you had the, um, the big glasses and the fake plastic nose and the the cigar and they're like waka 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 like we don't want to be delivering humor in that sort of <laughs> vibe especially if we're professionals and experts and we're trying to get our um, messages across so we make sure we do it in a way that um, I actually teach a way of delivering humor that I like to call stealth humor where um, you don't feel like you're being funny the audience doesn't feel like you're trying to be funny but everyone's having a good time and having a bit of a laugh. Oh, excellent. Because there's nothing worse than someone trying to be funny. Yeah. And it's um it's so cringy and it makes um people feel uncomfortable. The the harder people try, the more and the worse it goes, the worse the audience feels. And it just puts up this barrier to people. And you don't really want to do that um when you're in a speaking sense. So mm. yeah. and have you ever had a lot of trouble? helping somebody to find some angle to put on what they're saying that is, you know, funny for want of a better word, humorous? Um, yeah, so it's interesting. Um, probably would be a good point to talk about um, the definition of funny. So um, often when we think about funny, we think or humor, we think about it in the terms of um, in the context of entertainment. So like we think of stand-up comedians and funny movies and Netflix specials and jokes at the pub and all those sorts of things. And that's sort of like funny 
for entertainment purposes. And the focus on that is being funny, cracking jokes and getting laughs. Whereas when we're um, speaking, what we need to do is we need to shift that focus slightly. And so the humor is all about engagement. So rather than trying to crack the laughs and get the jokes with their audience, what we want to be doing is we want to be using it to um, getting people's attention or altering people's states. We want to use it to connect with others and we also want to help with engagement. So if you just sort of take the pressure right off, like we don't have to go out there and get laughs, we just have to be engaging. Um, that's sort of the main reason why we're using humour in a presentation sense. So that takes a lot of the pressure off. <laughs> and then the other cool thing um, with speakers is that, um, or speakers versus comedians, is a comedian's job is to go out there and get the audience to laugh and then laugh again and then laugh again until they've got sore faces and they go, oh, my gosh, that was hilarious. Um, whereas a speaker's job is to go out there and entertain and inform and inspire and motivate. So being funny is very low down on the list. So the cool thing about when we use stealth humour and the humour for engagement sort of combined is that a lot of the stuff that speakers say from a humorous point of view just sounds like the rest of their delivery. So if it falls flat and doesn't get a laugh, it doesn't matter because it just sounds like the rest of your speech, which is perfectly acceptable. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot less at stake, isn't there? In a, lot, a lot less at stake. And yeah. um, my, from my experience too, conference organisers or audiences when they're um, at an event as opposed to a comedy show are so, um, the bar is so low as far as what it takes to get them to be enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> like often they're just like oh my gosh this person's not going to bore me to tears I'm so excited and so they're very generous with their laughter as well so that makes it really good to be in a speaking sense as opposed to a comedian so <laughs> got it got it and I know just from my own journey of having to really find that space in business and get all of that you know the wherewithal just to get on a stage so I got yeah. on a stage and I would deliver my material but there were missing links in terms of phrasing and things like that, in terms of, you know, giving a gap and leaning in and that sort of thing. So is there any special things that help with helping the audience to see that actually you do care? And yes. yeah, because because humour, it's a big, it's a big deal, isn't it? We we really are drawn to people who I guess it's lightness, among other things, you know, lightness rather. You know, it might be even a deep topic. It might be a reasonably depressing topic, but it's to bring yeah. some lightness to the fore, isn't it, really? Well, it's interesting that you say um, to bring some lightness because I think that that's often what people think we need. Um, but there's two things that I want to say here. One of them is um, when my comedy career really changed gears was when I stopped thinking about myself and do I have a dry mouth? Will they see my shaking? Will I remember all my material? All of that sort of stuff to, oh, there's an audience here and they need something from me as well. And so when you shift your focus from me to them, all of a sudden they feel seen and they feel heard and they feel validated as well. So that lightness that you're talking about is actually people just going, oh, they see me. <laughs> like it's not all about the person on stage. It's all about us. And as a speaker, that's what it's all about, right? It's like, you've got all this great information. You want to give it to people so that they have a better life. So making sure that you deliver that information in a way that hits the mark for them is going to make them go, oh, this is good. They're thinking about me. <laughs> so mm, where no. it's often, often hidden as laughter and lightness, it's actually being seen and validated. Um, and that's so, important. What a great awareness. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And so then with... The, um, the intro is probably one of the key parts of somebody's presentation to really establish that rapport with the audience. So um, we've got some resources that from our little interview today that I'll let you know about afterwards. But one of them is questions to ask yourself to break down the barriers in your introduction. So there's a whole heap of different ways that people can see you as a speaker. And some of them is some people have resistance to the stereotype of your industry, for example, the stereotype of your position. Um, so I'm quite fortunate that my 
like I'm sort of introduced sometimes as a comedian and people all of a sudden go, oh, good, a comedian, excellent. <laughs> so they're good, they're good. Whereas if you're um, in the sort of um, a bit more of a serious um, industry, so like an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer, accountant, finance, those sorts of things where it's the stereotype is it's a bit dry and it's a bit serious and it's a bit, oh, um, then you if you can use if you can address that sort of stuff up front, then your audience is going to go, okay, we can relax now because this is, they've got us. Um, so it could be um, the stereotype that's working against you. It could be the topic title that's sort of working against you. Like I work with a lot of people who talk about mental health um, and some pretty serious full-on topics in that respect. So making sure that you bridge that gap with people. So we go, we've got you, it's going to be okay. Um, and then there's also a big difference between if people pay to see you, so if you're running a public workshop and people have like opted in and they've bought a ticket specifically to see you is very different than you've turned up at a team training day. Half the audience is like, oh, we just want to go back and clean out our inboxes and this is a waste of time. So it's really getting clear on what you're faced when you go to speak to work out what you need to talk about to drop those barriers down so that everyone's like, yep, we've got this connection, we're good to go. Mm, got it. That's a great point. And what came up a little bit earlier, but I didn't want to stop you. It, <laughs> Sorry, it was, I was on a roll. No, 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 I'm, I'm, you, everything you've been saying is so helpful. But there's the question of nerves, you know, and that thing of that, that you take the focus off yourself and you're focusing on the audience. Yeah. But what if your, your nerves are going crazy and, you know, what, what are your tips there? Because it's very common. Oh, totally. And um, I think the first probably five years of my stand-up comedy career were done under the influence of alcohol, which is probably not the same, not as appropriate for speakers to be drinking before a set. Um, but one of the thing, the big things for me was rather than, like there's a couple of things to help with nerves. One of them is a mindset shift from will they like me to how can I help them? is the first one. So you're getting really clear on your value to that audience and why you're talking to them. And that really helps just go, okay, now I know why I'm here. Um, and then the second sorts of things is like um, nerves are all about often when you get nerves and you're full of adrenaline, what happens is all your blood rushes from your brain to your body. So into your limbs so that you're ready to fight or flight. So like run away or to fight. So what happens when all the blood's rushed away to you? Like, I don't know if this is officially the medical version of it, but it sort of works from a speaking perspective. <laughs> so just a disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, so this may not be exactly what happens. But my theory is that all the blood rushes away from your brain to your muscles so that you can run away. Um, but what you need to do is get your blood back to your brain so that your brain kicks into gear. So it's like the best way I can explain it is if you've ever had a fight with somebody and you're like arguing and then you walk away and you go, oh, I should have said this and I should have said this and I should have said this. That's your brain re-engaging from like all the blood's gone back to your brain or whatever, like prefrontal cortex or something switching back on. So we need to actively try and do that beforehand. So a couple of things is to just move your body a lot. So we, um, can I stand up? Yeah. <laughs> so just to like shake out your arms beforehand because that sort of does that. Um, and then some really big deep breathing in and out and just to really slow your heart rate down. And just that if you visualize, okay, we don't need to run away. We're going to bring all the blood back to our brain and then we can speak. Mm, um, nice. And then the other, what's that? I, I just said nice. Yeah. Even yeah. nice to hear you say that to be honest. Yeah. And then the other thing that's really helpful for nerves is um, dry mouth is one of the hardest things to cope with because you just go, oh, I can't speak. So your blood might be back and you want to know what you want to say, but you can't actually speak. And so there's a trick, and this is going to be a bit weird because i got to stick my tongue out. But if you bite the sides of your tongue, like, um, hang on, <laughs> like, yeah, along yeah. The way, yeah. if you bite them with the backs of your teeth, can you see how much more saliva is produced in your mouth? Yes. How yeah. about that? 
Yeah, so that works heaps better than having a glass of water for some reason. I think it's more lubricating than water is, um, mm -hmm. but it just sort of helps you just go, okay, if I can't, like, just take a big breath. And you, you don't even really have, people don't need to know what you're doing. You can mm -hmm. sort of just, and, and it sort of helps. Nice. Okay. And I think even just knowing that helps you go, okay, well, I know what to do if I can't speak, if I can't. Like if I've got a really dry mouth, I know what to do and that's going to be heaps more helpful because mm. you feel a lot more in control of what you're doing and then focus back on the audience. What do they need? And um, go out there and smash it out of the park. <laughs> Great. Great. Well, now I want to hear about your author journey. Oh, the author journey. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, the only reason I've got these like so close, I don't normally have it quite so close is because I'm in the middle of writing another one. Um, but so this is a book about how to fundraise $5,000 in one night. So when we were doing the comedy shows, um, what would happen is some hosts would have it all over, like we'd sort of, they'd book us to come and do the comedy show. But and some hosts would get there and it'd be like a full house and everyone was relaxed and having a great time. And other times we'd be like in the lead up, really struggling to sell tickets and they were like freaking out because they didn't have everything under control and sorted out and they didn't know what to do and so I put it all into a book of like step by step what to do each week and so I'll just show you a couple of things oh this is the um edited version so <laughs> you'll see but like for example I've got a map here and that's like got all the steps of what you need to do um for running a fundraiser in on the one page so you don't like get to the end of the like the week before and go, oh, I've still got to do this and this and this and this and this and this and this, and it just gets too hard. So hmm, that's basically nice. what do. And yeah, what's that's... the next book? This is even more interesting to oh, me. <laughs> so it's a, it's a rejig of this book, um, but it's for event organisers and busy professionals who have to put on the company event but don't really know what they're doing or they don't really have time to be doing it. They're just like, hey, Tracy, guess what? You've got the job of putting on the event this year. And you're like, no. So, and that's, it's sort of come out of um, all the, a lot of the people that I work for from a speaking and MC perspective are sort of in that exact same position. So I'm like, I reckon I've got something that can help you with that. So. Fantastic. And when's it due out? Oh, I don't know. Last November. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, get on to that because I think there's a lot of people, especially now that we're out of COVID, you yeah. know, um, a lot more events are springing up. We have our appetite for events is high. Yeah. In fact, I've had that experience with my author showcase event that I'm running in August. Yeah. Those slots, the speaker slots went like hotcakes and in terms of drawing an audience in, I suppose that's my untested market in terms of, you know, this, I used to regularly run events at the State Library of New South Wales pre-COVID. And yeah. I could tell you that, you know, if I get 150 booking in, 75 will turn up or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. I, I knew it all so well. But yes, if you're writing something for people like me and some who haven't even had the pre-COVID experience of running events, that's gold oh good <laughs> this. yeah yeah and the other cool thing um just on the selling tickets thing is there um there's like an eight week promo plan um so that because I think when you're running events you sort of sometimes you feel like oh, I'm just saying the same thing and I'm pestering people over and over again and I just want them to come but I don't want to annoy them um so I can work out an eight week promo plan so you say a different thing each week to sort of build that FOMO, the fear of missing out and you know what to say and you just have it all locked and loaded, ready to go. So you don't have to go, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to say this week. It's like, it's all ready to go. Just fill oh, out your accounts. My way. God. <laughs> Good on you. Now, tell, tell us a little bit more about the resources that you've got available for people who are listening to this. Cause I know you will have really piqued the interest of, you know, I can yeah. think of exact people who are going to go, oh my God, where can I find this information from? Yeah. So I've put in a couple of different things. So um, the first one, and I'm going to test my memory here. The first one is how to break down the barriers with your introduction. So it's the questions to ask yourself just to get you in the thinking process and sort of put yourself in the audience's position of why would they potentially have some resistance to listening to me? Because as much as we'd like to think they don't, <laughs> they may. 
<laughs> so that's just a checklist of getting in some thinking about the things that you might need to address in your introduction. Um, there's also a funny on purpose formula that I have developed over the years working with professional speakers. Because what I realized is um, it's one thing to be funny, like, because a lot of people go, oh, I want to learn humor, I'm going to go and do a stand up comedy course. The bit that they miss when they do the stand-up comedy course is how to translate the skills of being funny into the skills of informing people and speaking. So there's lots of other things to think about, like how do you build your business? How do you put your, like how do you do your conversions if you've got a book for sale, which a lot of your audience probably do? How do we slot that into the, like how do we use a bit of humour around that and to put it into your speech so it doesn't sound like you're a salesy? Um, and then like really planning out where like where you actually need humor because you don't need humor the whole way through um you might just need it in certain key parts to help people keep going till you get back to the good stuff or <laughs> whatever um so the funny on purpose formula just sort of maps out all the things that you need to think about when you're trying to use humor in a presentation context um and then i've got a another worksheet i feel like i'm just like oh there's more there's steak knives <laughs> i love it um, the other thing is the nine perfect places to use humour in a presentation. So you don't need, like I said, you don't need to put it everywhere. So there's certain things that you might want to use humour for. So I've just got that as a bit of a checklist as well. And then I last year I ran a funnier in five days challenge. And I've, re, um, I've pulled out the replay of that. So I've put that in there as well because I think that just gives a good overview of how to get started on the humour in a presentation and engagement context for people so and the cool thing is because it's um it's the replay you don't even have to um you don't even have to wait five days you can binge watch all at once oh well bless you Kate that's incredibly generous I really appreciate that yeah thank you well I just wanted to yeah it helps helps people get on the way and it also just helps a lot of these resources also works of what we're talking about um in our chat was how to focus on what do the audience need and so these resources definitely help you right laser focusing on that as well thank you Kate now where's the best place for people to find you yeah so um on my website is kateburr.com and then all my socials is at kateburr.com but d-o-t-c-o-m got it so, yeah so um and then probably the one that I read I watch the most is or look at the most is Facebook and then LinkedIn, then Instagram. So okay, beautiful. So but Facebook, I will find you, it might just take a few days. Yeah. No, good. All good. Lovely. Thank you, Kate. And no. we'll be talking again when your next book comes out. Cause I oh, yes, definitely want to help promote that. <laughs> that's a that's a great resource. Yeah, I'll make sure I express a copy through to you, Jane. <laughs>